All right, so let me now switch to iPad and summarize about what we have done for the first app. So we are done for the first app. Let me summarize the conceptual uh, important stuff that you should really uh, pay attention to before you move on to the second app. All right, so that's about the GUI design uh, that we have uh, been talking about. Let me now switch to this particular page. So here we actually talk about the difference between view versus controller. And the important terminology you should really know about is we are doing event-driven programming. Okay, let's now talk about it uh, one by one. Let's go over this, uh, some text over here. We got a view, which will be the GUI. You can think about this part here is really the GUI. Specifically, it's really the uh, GUI design activity main.xml. Activity underscore main.xml. This is what we're talking about. On the other uh, on the other end, we got a controller. Controller is really the, uh, the, the Java class over here, main activity.java. Main activity.java. All right, let's now go over the GUI first, so just a recap. So you will, it's going to uh, specify the layouts. It's going to lay out the GUI components uh, for your app. And also it declare IDs of the GUI component. You can see we got IDs for every GUI components over here. I spoke about that many times already, right? You declare IDs and also the most important point is really this one here. Attach and register or register control methods. What's the control methods? You can think about control methods is really for every button click. For each, in principle, each button click. For example, you can see over here, let me just remind you very quickly. If I go back to the GUI design, you can see this is the only button we have. And if you see a uh, search for a click, for the on click over here, so that one there chose the method that that's actually defined in the controller over here. You can see this is the method that's defined over here, right? Control method. Okay, uh, okay so that's the on click you have to uh, set. All right, let's now go over the controller. For the controller, you will define control methods for every button click, right? Typically, in principle. For each button click. And for the second app, we're going to see two buttons. So that means you need two control methods. We'll see that. And you can retrieve the input from the, use, uh, from the GUI. And we spoke about three. Uh, we, thought, we spoke about uh, the helper methods that you can use, right? And similarly, to really display the output on the GUI, you, we also got a helper method. Let me just remind you again. So if you go back to the main activities over here, so this first helper method is for you to display output on the some text label. And these two are actually for you to retrieve the inputs either from the text field or from the spinner, the, uh, the spinner over here, right? Either way. But for you to do it, you gotta pass the ID, which were declared for the GUI side, right? Over here. And it's really important to see how exactly things will work at the runtime. Let me give you the principle and then I will, I will just visualize that quickly, okay? The principle is each user interaction with a GUI components. So GUI components could be uh, either the uh, text, uh, text field, it could be the uh, button click, uh, for example. Generates an events whose occurrence executes the attached register control methods, right? So let's now, uh, the events over here is really important. So we talk about event-driven programming, event. You know what, let me use a uh, better color over here. So event. All right, let's now talk about how you can visualize uh, what's happening in the runtime. Assume that this is the user. Okay, the user basically try to interact with the GUI over here, right? So the user is actually going to imagine they're going to put Jackie over here and choose Mr. And then they, they have to click on the say greetings uh, button, right? That's what they're going to do. Okay, and then as soon as they actually the user click on, let's say as soon as the user click on the button, 
right? So you can think about this part here, talk about some button click. And specifically for this example here, it's about say greetings uh, button clicked. Button click, and here is going to uh, execute. Well, execute, uh, let me write a little bit better. Well, execute the attached method. Okay, in this case, which method is being attached? If you go back to the GUI over here, this is the method, right? It's the uh, say uh, uh, compute button uh, compute button say greetings clicked, right? You can just define your name. Uh, that's just my uh, uh, convention, all right? So that uh, method has been attached, so it's going to be executed. And now we go to the controller side, and the controller is going to perform some computation. The controller is actually going to basically, in this case, it's going to retrieve the inputs, basically. Uh, it's going to retrieve. Sorry, I wish I could write better. T R I E V E. It's going to retrieve and also it's going to also compute. Right? And then the last step for the controller, if you go back here, is going to be uh, to really uh, here, the last line is going to set back the uh, output back to the uh, text view, right? So now it's going to go back. And this part over here is actually going to go back to here. Okay, this part here. And this part is going to display output, right? You can see it's kind of like a, a, a bi-directional uh, communication. So the user interact with the GUI and the GUI might be triggered uh, as, in, as, uh, as an event to really call the control method and the controller when executing controller method is actually going to retrieve and also compute and then once the result is available they're going to display back to the GUI so that's a bi-directional communication so that's really about event-driven programming and events again will be generated whenever you got any particular interaction with the GUI Right? For example, a button click. All right, so that's about the uh, first app. So it's really important for you to uh, understand the interaction between the user, which uh, uh, the user, you can think about a user. If I go back to here, the user will simply just type something here. Again, type Yuna, for example, over here, and then click on the button. As soon as I click on that, event will be uh, generated and then trigger and execute a method. And the controller will return, uh, will display back on the screen, the result over here. All right, so that's about the uh, uh, first app uh, First app I would like to talk about. There's one small thing I would like to show you very quickly, and then we, sh we should really go on to the second app, uh, which will be uh, some, other in uh, some more interesting aspect to show. Uh, one more detail I would like to show to you, okay? You can see here, uh, at a t uh, let me just go back to the emulator. You can see here we got greeting over here, right? Is it possible to change it? Okay. Later on, when you submit your lab, we would like you to change uh, this particular title over here, maybe to include your student number, so we can know uh, it's really uh, it's really developed by you. All right. Let me show you how you can do it. Uh, let me just go back to uh, maybe my uh, projects over here. If you click on projects over here, and then go under REST resources and go under values and go to the string.xml. This is where we added the uh, uh, the spinner array, right? remember? Okay, so now you can see there is something called app name. Don't change it, but now this is what you're gonna change. Currently, simply just greeting. That correspond to exactly the greeting over here. If I wanna change it, I can say uh, whatever I like, but I would suggest, first of all, say what app it is. And then, in this case, uh, I can identify myself. That's developed by me. You can put your name as well. I can say Jackie Wong over here. And maybe for your lab submission purpose, you may also need to put your student number over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, etc. right? But for tutorial, I'm not gonna do that, okay? But later on, you can read your lab instruction to see what you should put exactly for the app name over here. Let me now simply click on this, apply changes, and then restart the app. Let's see. 
the revised uh, title does not seem to be reflected. So I would suggest let's try the following. Let's simply say stop the app over here. Okay, click on stop and let's relaunch from scratch again. So it may, it maybe it takes some rebuild from scratch. All right, and let's go back to this particular app over here. There we go. Greeting app, Jackie Wong. So some uh, lesson here for you to learn. So whenever you change the title over here, this might in, uh, involve some complete uh, rebuild. So in that case, you don't want to just click on maybe apply changes. You may just want to say stop and then also launch again. So I think this might also apply to other scenarios where you believe your programming effects should be reflected, but somehow it was not. In that case, stop the app and relaunch again. So that, and then that might just work. All right. That's about everything I would like to speak about this particular first uh, greeting message app. I think it shows, uh, even though it's, it's, a, it's a very simple app, but it shows many good, uh, many uh, important aspects that will be necessary for you to, for you to build uh, your mobile app. All right, reviewed uh, all the details before you move on to the next app about counter. And let's now close the projects. You can simply go to uh, the top, go to file, and then close projects. And then you can simply say terminates over here. Or we can stop the uh, emulator first, which is terminates. All right, and then we'll continue from here for the counter app later.